Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel English Literature. Today we are going to talk about Cotton Mather and uh, his name is most popular and acknowledged with an uh, incident, a bloody black chapter of American history that is Salem Wistral. But today we are not going to talk about Salem Wistral. I will discuss about Salem Wistral later but today I just want to provide some information regarding Cotton Mather. Okay. Cotton Mather 1663-1728 Cotton Mather is a, the representative of New England Puritan intellectuality. He was a clergyman whose belief in the true ideologies and doctrines of Puritanism was fathomless. Actually, American colonial history, American colonial history was the history of Puritanism. You can find this mention of Puritan faith and Puritan belief and Puritan religion associated with the forefathers of colonial history again and again. And as, as well as his competency in exploring multitudinous aspect of life and experience through his pen. His pen is very vital because his writings is widely acclaimed and voluminous. His name is well known of openly landed in line with his ancestry. He was the grandson of Richard Mather and John Cotton and from their Cotton Mather. And he is mostly known for his ancestral fathers. Both of them were first generation ministers in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. He was admitted to Harvard College at the age of 12. 1678 graduation. 1685 his father increased Mather. So his father's name was increased Mather and he was appointed as the president of Harvard. From 1685, he served as New England's envoy to England. What is New England and what is England? England is a um, state of Britain and New England in America. So Mather, and there is one thing that when um, from England they came to new uh, came to the new land, and they they I'm not so <laughs> it does not look like uh, it is Wales. And it is England. Sorry, I am not so efficient in drawing. It is Ireland, it is Wales, it is England, and here it is Scotland. Okay. And so when they came to the new land, and they gave most of the names from these names, England, New England, just add new or add something, suffix and prefix, and they prefer these names. Now, so Mather was brought up under the powerful and secure shadows of his father and grandfather. But one deformity spoiled his ambition and smooth career. And that's why I told you to give importance on his pain. He had a speech disability. He used to stammer and stutter. This led to both of depression, nervous anxiety and breakdown. Because the career his father was appointed and the career he wanted to choose in his life was uh, cannot be the smooth because of this stammering and stuttering. It is not, not only smooth, it, is, it will not be possible to touch the ambition with this disability on his part. And this disability, this prevention make him depressed most of the time. He started studying medicine as he feared that his stammering would prevent him from being a good orator. He would not be suitable for the job of minister. So he focused more on his writing career and there I want to give the importance on pain, not on other thing. In 1685, when his father was appointed as the president of Harvard, he began serving as his father's assistant pastor at Boston Second Church. So he was appointed as an assistant pastor, but not the minister. And with his depression and bitterness in his life, he strangulated his desire to follow his father into the Harvard presidency. Because he, know, he knew that he could not wait. Finally, he became the pastor at the second church 
after his father's death. He was assistant pastor and from assistant pastor he became the pastor. And after his father's death, he died five years after. After his father died, he lived more five years. Mather experienced tragedy in his personal life also. His first two wives died and the third wife became a psychic patient. And out of his 15 children, most have died. So in his personal life, one after another, tragedies followed him. His works, Mather published over 400 books on various subjects from smallpox to inoculation to witchcraft. So in his writing, he published, a, I told you again and again that you give importance on his pen because he wrote over 400 books, you can imagine. And there are variegated subjects like smallpox, inoculation and witchcraft. The owners of the invisible world, some of his important works we will discuss here, 1693. This book is an important document that was written at the instigation of Salem judges. So if you are asked that which book is related to the Salem witchcraft trial and the uh, cotton method, then this book is the most important name among all other works. There are also other books that is related to Salem witch trial and written by cotton method. But this book is the most important, uh, important one among them the owners of the invisible world. Here Mather worked on the conspiracy theory relating to Salem witch trial. He was not directly but indirectly involved in the prosecution. Mather termed witchcraft as Satan's assault on God. And you find some controversy in the character and in, the, in his uh, whatever he is telling or writing there is some controversy in his character. Sometimes he is telling that it is a con conspiracy theory and sometimes he is supporting also and there is some ambiguity I also feel myself. Memorable providences, the owners of the invisible world, sorry, it is again written. And these two, actually these two books are mentioned again because these two books are the books on witchcraft. The Christian Philosopher, it is a book on science published in America. At the one hand, there is superstition like witchcraft and on the other hand, there is science. And the science is peeping its head. Science is peeping with its glory and light in the New England, in the new colony, in the new uh, America and the new land where superstition has the prominent role and Puritan faith, religion, suppression, subjugation all are gradually dwindling and something new intellectuality was peeping its head and Cotton Mather was also concerned about this. The method tried to establish a coordinating and mutual relationship between science and religion. It is better to keep science in terms than to let religion wiped out completely. Bonifacius or essays to do good. Bonifacius or essays to do good, 1710, on reformation of societies. This book had an important impact on Benjamin Franklin. You can find that Benjamin Franklin we'll talk of him later, was greatly influenced by Cotton Mather's writings. And it is one of his book that influenced Benjamin Franklin. India Christiana and the Negro Christianized. These two books are encouraged missionary works among African American slaves and Native Americans. Mather believed in the supreme importance of conversion as, as it is believed by all the other Puritan fathers that these people who are not Christian are pagan and they are meant nothing, they must be comforted. Magnalia Christi America. This is the magnum opus work of Chris, uh, Cotton Mather. Seven volumes of works. There are seven volumes. Focus on variegated facet of his experience as a colonist. It is the ecclesiastical history of America from the founding of New England to his own time. And you will find again the name of Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin's poor Richard Almanac has a similarity with Cotton Mather's Magnalia. You will find there is similarity. Cotton Mather took initiative in favor of inoculation during the Boston smallpox epidemic. This is one of his progressive work despite his attachment direct or indirect with Salem Wistral. Mather tried to defend the old order of church authority against the encroachment of increasingly secular thoughts. I 
told I have just told you about this point that Mathur is concerned about this encroachment of new intellectuality. On the one end, Puritan worldview, and on the other hand, a new vide of scientific outlook. So there must be some way to keep the religion intact in its own position. Now this book describes the New England churches, their minister training the life of leading figures and accounts of the class and conflicts with native people. So this book is very an important document for all the other writers and to know the history of that time. And as he captured the lives and works of many people of during that time, so it is obviously an important document. It is a prose epic of New England Puritanism. It was published in 1702 in London. It is written from a religious point of view. It contains a rich store of biography of eminent persons. Benjamin Franklin, who had arrived in Boston, learned from Mather and was influenced by his writing. It says to do good that we have just talked about earlier. Here I will find the name. Bonifacius or it says to do good. The same book. Now, Mather's altruistic attitude, kindness, and deep desire to do good to others are the key points of this book. The book also influenced Benjamin Franklin. Okay, <laughs> this point is repeated, I think. Anyway, next day we'll talk about Salem Witch Trial or any other topic. <laughs> I am not sure about me. Bye for now.